There's a lot of buzz about estrogen creams lately and whether or not they are anti-aging. Are estrogen creams the key to reversing the clock after menopause? And if so, are they safe? Well, these questions and more, I'm going to answer them in this video, so stay tuned till the end. My name is Dr. Swati Cannon, and I am a cosmetic dermatologist out here in California. And welcome back to my channel where we do deep dives into skin and hair health to help you make informed decisions. Let's talk about first, what is estrogen? So estrogen is a steroid hormone very similar to testosterone or cortisol, and it's made from cholesterol. The reason I'm telling you this is because estrogen since it's made from cholesterol, it can cross the skin barrier and it can go into your bloodstream. And this is why we have to discuss the side effect profile for topical estrogen. And we will definitely do that in this video. In women of reproductive age, estrogen is primarily made by the ovaries and it's in the form of estradiol. Estradiol is also the form that we want in estrogen creams. It is the true native form that will also help for skin health. Adrenal glands, which sit on top of the kidneys, these glands also make estrogen in both men and women, and it's in the form called estrone. But this amount is so small that, you know, for women, most of your estrogen comes from your ovaries. Fat or adipose tissue also makes estrogen in the form estrone in both men and women, but again, it's in very small quantities. What happens to estrogen as women get older. So when we hit perimenopause or menopause, our estrogen starts to decline. Menopause is when your period stops for over 12 months or a year. Perimenopause is when you have irregular periods, so the frequency of your periods may go down, but then it's also associated with other symptoms of like hot flashes, dryness, fatigue, irritability, and a whole bunch of other symptoms that are related to estrogen decline. The reason we get all of these symptoms during perimenopause is because estrogen is so vital in women for so many different bodily functions. And this includes cardiovascular health, bone health, skin health, brain health. So it's so vital in so many of our different organs. So when we start seeing a decline, all of these different organs also in a, in a way start deteriorating. As a dermatologist, I'm mainly gonna focus on the skin aspect of using estrogen, and so I won't be discussing any of the other changes related to menopause as much. Since the skin is the largest organ of your body, it's a very estrogen dependent organ. So you're going to notice a lot of changes when your estrogen declines. And these changes include vaginal dryness, which is still skin by the way, even though it's a type of skin called the mucosal skin, very much like your gums, but you have vaginal dryness, normal dry skin on other parts of your body, and this is due to decreased oil or sebum production. There's also reduced collagen synthesis. And so when you start reducing your collagen, the thickness of your skin goes down and it becomes a lot thinner. And there's also a reduction of hyaluronic acid. And hyaluronic acid is the molecule in your skin that attracts water. So when it attracts water, it causes hydration and plumpness of the skin. So when you have reduced collagen and reduced hyaluronic acid, you're going to have more wrinkles and more sagging. There's also what's called epidermal thinning. So the top layer of your skin is called the epidermis and this thins down down with estrogen decline. Often my patients will say, you know, I just get scratches so easily, like I just bang my hand and all of a sudden the skin sloughs off. And so this is pretty classic because of the epidermal thinning down. And then finally, there's also impaired wound healing. So any cuts or abrasions are going to take longer to heal. When we discuss the collagen decrease in relationship to the estrogen, the collagen decrease after menopause is so fast, then within five years of menopause, you lose 30% of your collagen which is insane. And so the sagging and the wrinkling almost happens overnight. And that's usually what all of my patients say. Even my mom tells me, you know, wait until you hit menopause, you're pretty now, but when you hit menopause, things are just gonna go down south. And that's really quite unfortunate that we as women have to just accept that after menopause is just a steep decline downward. I'm really excited to see that we have more research and hopefully more and more research will continue into helping women cope and you know, surpass their menopausal changes. So how can we help right now? Where a lot of the treatments are now focusing on hormone replacement therapy, and these hormones include both estrogen and progesterone. For most of this video, I'm mainly going to talk about estrogen, but know that estrogen isn't the only hormone that goes down with menopause. So oral estrogen replacement is a cornerstone 
for hormone replacement therapy, but it does come with a lot of risks. And these include blood clots, higher cancer risk like breast cancer, uterine cancer, and even ovarian cancer. So for oral therapy and even for topical therapy, I do recommend that you speak to your gynecologist and primary doctor before you proceed. And if you do have an oncologist, then please speak to your oncologist as well. For this video, we're mainly going to talk about topical estrogen because that's what an estrogen cream is. So how does topical estrogen work? Well, topical estrogen is directly applied to the skin and in estrogen deficient skin, meaning in women who are perimenopausal or menopausal, when we replace that estrogen, it will help with collagen synthesis. And this means that your skin texture and the firmness will increase. In fact, there was a 2020 study that showed that consistent use of estrogen cream over several months increased not only the skin texture, but also the firmness of the skin. And these changes, by the way, are also seen with oral estrogen. So I do have some women who are postmenopausal who are on a low dose of estrogen replacement therapy and they tell me that, hey, my skin feels a lot thicker and a lot more glowier since I started. That is true. It happens with oral estrogen as well. But topical estrogen in women who are not estrogen deficient is not going to really help much because if you think about it, the estrogen receptors are saturated with the estrogen that you're already making. Similarly, I don't recommend using topical estrogen if you're a man just because of side effects. So usually you want to think about replacing estrogen when you're perimenopausal or menopausal. And there's not a specific age when you become perimenopausal, but usually in your 40s and 50s. Once you start developing symptoms like hot flashes or decreasing periods, that's when you can consider estrogen replacement therapy, including topical estrogen. Now, topical estrogen actually has been around for some time. I know it's getting a lot of buzz for anti-aging, but it's been around for some time because we've been using topical estrogen to treat vaginal dryness. And this is usually in the prescription form of estradiol. It comes as 0.01%. The estrogen form is also good for your normal skin. So this is a form, like I said, you want to make sure that your estrogen cream has for your skin changes. Several pharmacies now actually compound estradiol and even estriol for anti-aging cream. The ad that I get most commonly is Muesli, and I checked Muesli out to see what kind of creams they offer. They have two different formulations. The first formulation contains estriol and estradiol, but their trio also contains progesterone in addition to the estrogen compounds. The reason progesterone is added is to combat something called endometrial hyperplasia, which is caused by estrogen. And endometrial hyperplasia is thickening of your uterine lining and this is estrogen dependent and when your uterine lining thickens it can cause heavy or abnormal bleeding if the endometrial hyperplasia is atypical meaning you have some atypical cells then this increases the risk of uterine cancer and so that's why muesli has decided to add progesterone into their estrogen creams for any menopausal woman that contains a uterus now whether or not you need a progesterone we will definitely discuss that but regardless you know i am not a gynecologist i'm not an oncologist so if you have concerns about using estrogen cream with or without progesterone please talk to your gynecologist the pharmacy that i personally use to prescribe estrogen cream is the skin medicinals pharmacy their estrogen cream contains estriol estradiol as well as hyaluronic acid and vitamin c so i really like this combination and most patients tolerate it pretty well what about estrogen for hair loss i know we're mainly talking about skin related changes but with menopause there also comes a lot more hair loss than prior to menopause there are some studies that suggest that estradiol may promote hair growth in postmenopausal women but the evidence is pretty limited so i don't recommend it yet for hair loss. For skin health, I would recommend that you use topical estrogen at nighttime. You want to use a pea-sized or a small amount for your entire face, neck, or hands. This is very similar to how I recommend using retinoids. So a pea-sized amount is very small that I'm not that worried about systemic absorption. However, I don't recommend that you bathe in topical estrogen because there would be systemic absorption and that would be too much if you used it all over. So that segues us into what are the potential side effects of topical estrogen? Well, just like using any cream from an estrogen cream, you can also get redness, irritation, or itching. So if you get any of those symptoms, you can just stop using the cream or you might have to change the formulation, meaning you might have to use a different pharmacy. Estrogen topically can also increase blood vessel growth in that area so patients can get worsening of their rosacea. They can also get something called angiomas and so angiomas are these or spider angiomas are basically blood vessel growths that look like a spider and once you stop the estrogen cream usually the angiomas go away but if they don't go away then we can use laser treatment to help get rid of them. I also don't recommend using estrogen cream if you have melasma. So melasma is a condition you're genetically predisposed to but it's triggered and exacerbated by hormones 
hormone. So any hor hormonal fluctuation like starting birth control or getting pregnant it can trigger melasma in a woman and sun also makes it worse. If you have melasma, I do not recommend using estrogen anywhere, not just on your face, but I don't recommend using estrogen anywhere if you have melasma. Side note, I do have two videos on melasma that talk about how you can treat it at home and the treatments that I like to do in my office. And then I have a third video on different ingredients that I like for skin discoloration. So make sure you check those out if you have any problems with skin discoloration and melasma. By the way, if you are enjoying this video and you find it helpful, please hit the thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can stay tuned with the latest and greatest videos on skin, hair, and nails. So while those side effects of estrogen that I've just discussed are skin related, we have to also discuss what are the potential systemic side effects with topical estrogen. And this is what people are so rightfully worried about, right? Like, does it increase risk of cancer? Does it give me blood clots? So we're going to go through the evidence for each of these questions. When we talk about estrogen replacement, most of our side effects come from oral therapy. Oral estrogen replacement does have risks of blood clots in patients, as well as a higher risk of breast cancer, uterine cancer, and potentially ovarian cancer. As I discussed before, you know, hormone replacement also includes replacement with progesterone in some cases, so you really have to discuss with your gynecologist about this. I will mainly be focusing on estrogen-related risks. So the million-dollar question is, can topical estrogen have the similar risk profile as oral estrogen? And the reason we ask this question is because estrogen topically does get systemically absorbed. However, how much of it gets absorbed is very dependent on multiple factors. The first factor is the type of estrogen. So different estrogen types can be absorbed at different rates. The second factor is also the formulation, like the vehicle the estrogen cream comes in. So is it a gel? Is it a cream? Is it a lotion? Something that's thinner like a serum or gel is going to be absorbed much more than a thicker lotion or cream. And then the area of application is the most important. So skin thickness and the blood flow in different body parts play a role in absorption rates. The location also matters. So for example, we talk a lot about topical estrogen for vaginal dryness. Well, the vagina is a mucosal organ, so it's very similar to your gums or the inside of your lips. Mucosal organs have a lot more blood supply and it's a lot more to the surface. That, that's why those, those areas look so pink. And so when we apply topical estrogen on those areas, you're gonna have a much higher systemic absorption than applying topical estrogen on normal skin like my arm or my face. But even if you do apply it on your arm or your face, it does get absorbed. And honestly, how much of it gets absorbed when you apply it on your arm or your skin, we just simply don't know. We don't know, we have not studied it. So there was one study that actually showed that when patients use estradiol gel on their forearm, that skin became thicker but their cheek skin also became thicker. And so that indicates that the, as some amount of the estrogen was absorbed. But that was one study. We have to make sure that we're not generalizing these conclusions from one study. In general, based on a lot of different reviews that are focused on vaginal estrogen or vaginal topical estrogen, the risk of topical estrogen therapy is thought to be pretty low. And remember I said that the vaginal skin is going to absorb a lot more topical estrogen into the bloodstream than your normal skin. So a lot of this evidence that we have for, from topical estrogen comes from vaginal estrogen. So the risk is thought to be low with topical estrogen. So even though tiny amounts of the hormone do enter the bloodstream, most of it stays pretty local and doesn't go into other parts of your body. And because so little of the hormone is absorbed with topical treatment, topical estrogen does not help with systemic symptoms like hot flashes, irritability, fatigue, or brain fog, or any of those other symptoms that are associated with perimenopause or menopause. And topical estrogen does not seem to increase the risk of blood clots as we see with oral estrogen. So all of those things tell us that, hey, most likely topical estrogen for age-related changes or, for, or to thicken collagen is going to be okay. But what about the risk of breast cancer Cancer, uterine or ovarian cancer from topical estrogen. So I will share my knowledge and this is a very complex area. I am not a gynecologist or oncologist and I keep on saying this to remind the viewers that, you know, if you do have any questions about cancer risk, please speak to the appropriate physicians. I'm a dermatologist and I will give you my recommendations based on the review that I have done. I think a good source for most of you who are wanting to learn about estrogen therapy is actually cancer.org and I'll have it in the description below. It really goes over everything that I'm going to discuss and also will give you similar studies. So we know that from oral estrogen therapy, there is a higher risk of breast cancer. And the longer you use oral estrogen, the higher the risk of breast cancer. Interestingly, with oral estrogen, the risk 
of breast cancer returns back to normal, like back to somebody who never used estrogen or progesterone within three years of discontinuing estrogen therapy. So to put the risk into numbers with oral estrogen, if 10,000 women took estrogen and progesterone therapy in a year, it would result in about eight more cases of breast cancer per year. Similarly, with ovarian cancer, the risk is higher of ovarian cancer with estrogen and progesterone therapy, but this link is not as determined as estrogen with breast cancer. So some studies say higher risk and some studies say, you know, the risk is not that bad. However, I, you know, again, it's something that you need to discuss. And this is again, still with oral estrogen. For endometrial cancer, oral estrogen by itself increases the risk of endometrial cancer. So that is why often patients will have progesterone added to their regimen because progesterone combats that risk of uterine cancer or endometrial cancer that you get with sole estrogen therapy. As far as topical estrogen goes, you know, there was a Cochrane review. Cochrane is like a medical database. And there was an analysis of 4,000 patients who used vaginal estrogen cream. And they found that using vaginal estrogen cream does not increase the risk of endometrial cancer, which is pretty surprising, right? Because the vagina and the uterus are very close to one another. So that tells us that the absorption of the topical estrogen is pretty local, that it doesn't really get dispersed into other organs, even if they're nearby. Similarly, studies have found that vaginal estrogen therapy does not increase the risk of breast cancer. And probably again, because it does not go into distant body sites. So based on the studies that look at vaginal estrogen treatment, we can conclude that when we use estrogen on normal parts of the skin, that it most likely will not increase the risk of any sorts of breast cancer or uterine cancer. However, you know, this statement is simply just not studied yet in women who are using topical estrogen for cosmetic reasons. So we do have to keep up to date on the literature and go wherever the evidence leads us. But for now, I would say that topical estrogen is safe to use. Even for patients who have a history of breast cancer, topical vaginal estrogen is probably safe. And there was actually a study that showed that vaginal estrogen did not increase the risk of breast cancer in patients who have a history of breast cancer and they follow these patients five years out. However, if you do have a history of breast or any sort of cancer, cancer like uterine or, or ovarian, I would definitely discuss with your oncologist before using any sort of hormone replacement therapy, even if it's topical. And as a skin cancer surgeon, I just have to put this out there that topical estrogen does not increase the risk of skin cancers. So in summary, I believe that topical estrogen is safe to use for cosmetic reasons, but it really needs to be a discussion between you, your dermatologist, your gynecologist, and if you have an oncologist. And you really have to determine if that theoretical increased risk of breast cancer or uterine cancer is worth it to you to use estrogen for cosmetic reasons. And as far as whether you should get it from online pharmacies like Muesli by yourself, I really would not recommend that. I really do recommend that you talk to your gynecologist first before you approach any sort of online pharmacy. So while topical estrogen is getting, gaining a lot of buzz, and I do think that it shows a lot of promise, I will definitely be following it closely to monitor for any long-term consequences. As of now, I do not use estrogen as first-line treatment for collagen synthesis. Instead, I prefer to to use other tried and true devices and treatments. So one, I really like using retinoids for collagen production. And I have a video called Retinoids 101 where I go over the retinoids that I like as well as how to introduce it into your skincare regimen. There are also anti-aging procedures and tightening procedures that I think work way better than topical treatments. And you can check out these two videos where I share anti-aging lifestyle tips and procedures that I do in my clinic. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.